uh, and when they drew nigh unto Jerusalem and will come to Bat Batich unto the Mount of Olive, then said Yahushai to two disciples, then sent Yahushai two disciples, saying unto them, Go into the village over against you, and straightway ye shall find an ass tied and a colt with her. He said, Loose them and bring them unto me. And if any man say aught unto, unto you, ye shall say, Yahweh had need, or the, say the master, which is the word Lord, the master had need of them, and straightway he will send them. He said, All this was done that it might be fulfilled, or it was accomplished. Palaro, you know son, <clears throat> which was spoken by the prophet saying, Tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh upon unto thee, meek, and straightway upon an ass, and a coat of a fool of an ass. So, Yahweh Shai, does Yahweh Shai do some um, apology law? No. What actually showed is that he accomplished, you know, it was fulfilled. He uh, completed a, a, a course in one of the prophecies. If he didn't do that, then the word would have been void. You know what I mean? And Yahushai said so many times. So when you go to like um, Luke, uh, Luke 24, Luke 24 verse uh, 44. You know what I mean? Say Luke 24 verse 44. He said, he said unto them, These are the words which I speak unto you while I was yet with you, that all things, not some, all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and in the prophets and in the Psalms concerning me. Then he opened their understanding that they might understand the scriptures because they didn't understand before. That would say then, but he said it will be fulfilled. Whatever was written that he should come, that was been fulfilled. Now remember, he said to make you return. So all the scriptures haven't been fulfilled as yet, and it was accomplished or completed as yet, or the course in which it was was um, stated to finish. It has not finished that course. So coming back to, to um, Matthew 5.17, he said, Think not I am come to destroy the law. He said, All the prophets, I am not come to destroy the law, but to fulfill. A quick precept with that will be going to um, 2 Kings. 2 Kings 17. 17 verse 37 he say and the statutes and the ordinances of the law and the commandment which he wrote for you ye shall observe to do forevermore and ye shall not fear other gods so it, he made quite clear he say that was ordained from before and we shouldn't be like worshipping other gods because our king soon come you're not supposed to be in that kind of mindset to be like, hey, saying the Lord's done away with. I know a lot of people like to think that way in the churches. Or well, these um, hard houses will say because they don't they don't correct the people. They actually um, they actually indulge them in, in wickedness. You know I mean they actually say they can bless and eat pork and all type of meat. They call um they call when a man or a woman having sex, you know, I mean, uh, out of what they call marriage, they call that adultery. Or well, not adultery, they call it um, slack it. They call that um, fornication. Which when you look up the word fornication, it actually means um, adultery or spirit or words, figuratively idolatry. Now idolatry is as bad as adultery whereas because the Lord say he's married unto us 
pursuing to Isaiah 54 verse 5. He made that quite clear. All right. So even like when they talk about bless and eat, it can't be like that because look at another scripture here. He said um, in Isaiah 66 verse 15, he said, For behold, Yahweh will come with fire and with his chariot like a whirlwind to render his anger and fury and in his rebuke with flames of fire and by fire and by his sword will the most high plead with all flesh and the slain of the Lord shall be many he said they that sanctify themselves and purify themselves in the garden behind one tree which trees represent like people you know what I mean you see in the midst eating swine flesh and the abomination and the mouse shall be consumed together said the Mosai because the Mosai give even even um, dietary laws you're not supposed to be on that kind of that kind of madness you know, you know so let me go to another precept actually talking about the Lord actually going to render that anger too it's quick here is now Jude, um, yeah, Jude uh, was uh, 14. He said, And Enoch was the seventh from Adam of his side of these, saying, Behold, the Lord cometh with ten thousands of his sins to execute judgment upon all and to convince all that are ungodly among them of their ungodly deeds which they have ungodly committed and all their hard speeches which ungodly sinners had spoken against him because are you saying the Lord will to come like you speak against the heavenly father and even what his son said son made it quite clear he didn't came to um, to remove that law at all no way no how he didn't come with that type of um intentions but here in this time here now the churches that they have what they call what we will call hardest houses you know what i mean they indulge people into that type of um madness you know what I mean? Okay. Let me see if I can get a shit to it. Let's finish on read this uh, Matthew. Matthew 5 or uh, 17. That way he said, Think not that I am come to destroy the law. The laws have not been destroyed. This is, this is how you know right from wrong. You know what I mean? Because I'm pursuing to like um, Romans. Romans uh, 7 7. I must get, get a minute to reach here. Romans 7 7. It actually said, uh, He said, What then? Shall, what then? Uh, so, what shall we say then? Is the law sin? Yahweh forbid. Nay, I had not known sin but by the law. For I had not known loss except the law had said, Thou shalt not cover. So it was to know that you transgressed in a particular way, you had to know the law. You had to know what law you have broken. So you like to say homosexuality. How is that is not in the Ten Commandments? You had to know what law is. It's 615 laws. Yeah, I know what law had um had you been offended or offended or more or less offended. Alright. Um five thirteen. He said this is uh, Romans five verse thirteen. He said, For until the law sin was in the world, right? But sin is not imputed where there is no law. So if there is no law saying you shouldn't do this or shouldn't do that, 
you can't approach and say, well, hey, that is a sin. You can't do that. Once there's no law, there's no state. You can't say that is a sin. But where there's a law and you go and you, and you go on to, to transgress that same law, in other words, go to break that same law, that is sin. Pursuing the first John 3, 3 and 4. Alright? Even um even I just want to all to here now. Um, 415. This is a um, Romans 4.15, he said, Because the law will get wrath, for where no law is, there is no transgression. So even when you're coming to the knowledge of the Mosai, you got to know what is in the New Testament concerning that. Because whereas you're not supposed to like to see God, the law of the Heavenly Father, that would be wrong. I mean, that would be, that would be like uh, actually you taking a, a chance you don't do that, but the ones who actually brought those things. I'll bring one piece of here. You see, um, this is Second Peter two, verse one. He said, "But these were false, but it's like him. But there were false prophets among the people, even as there shall be false teachers among you, who privately." shall bring in double heresies even denying the Lord who that brought them and bringing themselves swift destruction so the double heresies which is false teaching is something that they actually bring about in the churches right now you know and even when you jump down to verse like verse 14 he said having eyes full of adultery you say I cannot see some sin beguile unstable souls and unstable souls and hearts they have exercised with covetous practices cursed children which have forsaken the right way which was supposed to follow the laws they have forsaken the right way and gone astray following the ways of Balaam the son of um, Bozar who love the wages of unrighteousness. Now, when they follow um, Balaam, right, that is like going after a different um, order, a different God. You know what I'm saying? But where he say, he say, they love the wages of unrighteousness. Right there, when you look up the word righteousness in the Son of One Compact Dictionary, it says, um, in the most frequent and basic use in um, most frequent and most used way in the, in the Bible it is deemed by the standard of the most high law so whereas they say that the Lord of it that will be referred to as blasphemy because the most high had never never ceased that law all right Most that never ceased his law. No time, no way. That will be false, that will be false doctrine. That will be when people get lied to. Because a lot of people actually get caught up in that. He says this is uh, Surak, which is Ecclesiasticus in the Apocrypha. Uh, 15 verse 20. He said he, he had commanded no man to do wickedly. Neither had he given any man license to sin. When you look up the word license, it's like allowance or liberty to go ahead and do something or, or whatever it is, or it may be. Like you have your license for, to drive, or your driver's permit license, or you have a license to, to practice uh, uh, or some law or something, which means you have that liberty, that right. The Lord never gave no one the right to actually break his law. That's why even when the Messiah came, he made it quite clear, coming back to, to Matthew 5, 17. Take not that I am come to destroy the law or the prophets. I am, I am not come to destroy but to fulfill. Verse 18, he says, For verily I say unto you, 
till heaven and earth pass, one jot or one tittle shall in no wise pass from the law till all be fulfilled. So nothing shall cease from the law until everything is accomplished. Verse 19, he says, Whosoever therefore shall break one of these least commandments, right, which is ordered, and shall teach men to do so, tell a man, you know what, you could, um, you could eat pork, bless and eat. You're eating and you're, you're, you're teaching men to do that. You know, you see that, and teaching men to do so, he shall be called least in the kingdom of heaven. But whosoever shall do, which is do, is a practice and, and do, and teach them, which is teach others to obey, they say the same shall be called great in the kingdom of heaven. I mean, so yeah, you don't follow nobody outside here. You have to keep your mind firm. The law is not done away with. That's what I say. The most I never made for you laws. Matter of fact, you're supposed to establish it. You know what I mean? Uh, I believe that I can get a piece up there quick and close this. This is Romans 3 verse, uh, 3 verse 31. He said, Do we then make void the law through faith? Like a lot of says, through faith we saved. So because of faith, so we just do so and say the Lord done with it's empty, it's no longer um, in practice, no longer in use. Yahweh forbid, in other words, Mosai say no, no we. He say yeah, we establish the law. In other words, for the time you come to this knowledge, you start to establish it in your gates. In other words, you set your house in order. From the time you get, you come to that knowledge, you know, like in um, Second Ezra 14, Second Ezra 14 verse uh, 13. He said, "Now therefore set thy house in order." So the only way you will set order is what by implementing the Most High Law, which is to create order, and instead of having disorder, he said. Um, and reprove thy people, in other words, tell them to correct them, comfort such of them that be in trouble, and renounce corruption. Alright? So that is a misconception that the churches them have, just like John 3.16, and all the other scriptures in which they stumble at. Alright? So, until uh, the next post-production, let's um, corruption again, I will say, Shalom.